scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So you see that it, it was an attack to stop you from receiving the word and to stop your growth. These five signs we examine in the morning are classic signs that that whoever becomes a victim of some or more of these signs and if we are to be honest with ourselves at one point or the other everybody will face the challenge of one or more of these signs and so uh, the, the meeting in the morning was not just a meeting for a few group of people it was a challenge to everyone who is serious about God and intends to be serious or remain serious to cry before the Lord and ask for help some of us from the discussion in the morning we found out that based on the rating it was five over five everything was wrong with our spiritual lives and it was a call for prayer for repentance for brokenness a few of us saw one or more areas that would need to look at and um, for those of us who could not make it I'm sure that you do well to get access to the teachings and listen again conferences like these are not just designed to be a religious program honoring a calendar program it's supposed to be a meeting that impacts our spiritual lives maximally are we together praise the name of the lord and so continuing from our discussion in the morning i want to teach and i'm trusting like i promised in the morning that would we'll spare a few minutes to be able to pray and we trust that god would grant us the privilege to experience his power and his grace in our midst that those who have come with burdens and yokes of all sorts that god will give us a visitation tonight in jesus name i am a believer and a man of god that is convinced that every time people show up before the god of heaven if it is before the god of the bible we must be able to receive the full package of everything in store for us that means we must have an encounter with jesus the son of the living god we must be transformed by the power of the word that comes to us we must also be able to enjoy the the power of god in and through our lives to heal to deliver to set free there's no point coming to talk about a great and powerful jesus and then living back with sicknesses living back with burdens living back with yokes if he's the god of the bible he would not just leave you transformed he will also insist that everything that does not represent him in your life that there must be a separation of it and i'm praying for somebody already this night that in the name of jesus everything that is antichrist walking in your life walking in your body at the instance of the word of god it must give way once and for all tonight in the name of jesus christ second peter chapter 3 from verse 17 and 18 second peter will begin for tonight chapter 3 from verse 17 and 18 therefore this is amplified let me warn you beloved knowing these things beforehand it says be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men who distort doctrine and fall from your own steadfastness of mind knowledge truth and faith 
verse 18 it says but grow spiritually mature in the grace and knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ it's an instruction it's an admonition to him be the glory honor majesty splendor both now and to the day of eternity amen so he's forewarning the people and saying be careful there are unprincipled men who will come and thwart doctrine and by giving them a listening ear they will corrupt your own spiritual health he's warning them and he said rather contend for spiritual growth he says to grow and become spiritually mature in the grace and the knowledge of our lord jesus christ so i want to teach very briefly on spiritual maturity spiritual maturity haven't examined the vital signs that make for spiritual retrogression we must then be able to examine the ways of the kingdom that makes for maturity and stature in the kingdom hallelujah the bible clearly lets us know that believers can and should grow that means when a believer now the foundation please let me your attention the foundation of the believers journey doctrinally speaking based on the truth revealed in scripture the foundation of a believer's journey is his encounter with jesus christ do we agree you would think these things are very simple you remember this is a kingdom life conference so it is it is supposed to mature the understanding of believers you will be amazed to know how many believers cannot give you the sequence and the protocol of the growth of the believer they do not know from what step to what step the foundation doctrinally speaking of the believers experience begins with his or her encounter with jesus christ that means it does not matter how many years you are around church it does not even matter what role and what function you play according to the authority of scripture if you have not encountered jesus the son of the living god then you have not begun your spiritual experience you can be existing but not alive you are only alive if and when the life of christ is manifest within you do we agree on that jesus was speaking to nicodemus in john chapter 3 and the discourse span down to 15 and then 16 that we know as a popular scripture it says for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son now we know from scripture that it's not just jesus is not only he's not his one and only begotten son alone we have become the begotten too so jesus has now become the firstborn among we the begotten are we learning now so but at the time this was written his one and only begotten son he says that whosoever so this is a privilege that is not just for pastors regardless region he said whosoever shall believe in him that that individual would not perish but have life eternal john again in his epistle was teaching us and he says this is the record that god had given us eternal life he says but this life is in his son are we bible students he says so that he that had the son had life that means you cannot assume you have the life of god without an encounter with the son of god are we together say for instance i have a hundred dollar bill in my pocket and i'm telling you the only way to access this hundred dollar bill is to meet me is that true you cannot claim to be in possession of that hundred dollar bill if you have not met me there are many people who have not met jesus and yet they claim to have the life of god the bible says the administration of eternal life was so structured that until you encounter the son before you have that life no assumptions the reason why we have to examine this is because the more you have people in church who have not met jesus the more will not be free from trouble are we together now so in as much as everybody is welcome you come as you are but you don't stay as you are you come as you are with an intention to meet jesus the son of the living god so that your salvation experience would begin many times you have respectfully speaking churches and houses of worship full of people who are far i'm not just talking of people who are backsliding people
people who have never even met Jesus sadly some of them are in committees sadly some of them are in very very sensitive positions within the house of God and so you find out that the Holy Spirit cannot move through these people to bring policies and things that bring honor to the name of the Lord this is not an issue of backsliding this is not even an issue of lack of renewal it is that you have not encountered the Son of God a man and a woman who has not encountered the son of god every negative thing is possible because you are helplessly under the influence of demons so even if by your personality you are a good person you are still a risk because demons can have access to you and cause mayhem that you yourself will later regret it matters that people are saved it is not just adding to the salvation figures of the church it is the only act of safety there is no guarantee over any man who is not saved are we together so the foundation of the believers journey must start not with longevity of church attendance you would think that many people feel that haven't been 10 years in church there are many young people who assume that they are saved simply because they were born by christian parents and passed through the regular sunday school system and by reason of consistency they are naturally elected to be leaders or escorts and they gravitate into leadership there are no assumptions with jesus are we learning many of us if i presume have passed through some sort of tertiary system of education in every institution did you know that there are people who buy and sell within the campus and yet they are not students some of them were born there they've been there for many years they can tell you everything they can show you when you come in as a new student they can direct you to every faculty but that does not mean they are professors just because they've been around the institution does not automatically impart a degree or a master's or a phd on them there is a system that they must pass through so there is a deception that is destroying people in the church and let me challenge us respectfully speaking these are the seasons where you need to examine everybody under your care to verify whether they are saved don't assume your children are saved are they saved indeed don't assume your spouse is saved are they saved indeed don't assume the leaders in a church are saved are they saved indeed are we learning yes. so the believers journey starts with the encounter with Jesus the son of the living God encounter with angels does not bring salvation hello please look up please look up we have to verify who you see when it has to do with salvation it is the office of the christ according to the authority of scripture you have to encounter christ in as much as the holy spirit according to the integrity of scripture the holy spirit is the one who comes to be the manifestation of the presence of jesus in your life but you don't give your life to the holy spirit you give your life to jesus the son of the living god this is what the bible teaches there are many many if these things are not corrected we will be in trouble in the next few years to come because there are people who have encountered angels genuinely and they believe they are saved just because they met angels it is not in the office of angels to give you salvation because you have an encounter with heaven or hell congratulations for your encounter but it does not mean you are saved a good christian name is not equal to salvation a good voice and intelligence you went through the sunday school system very well you can quote scripture it does not equal salvation there are situations in our lives and in the house of god that does not require counseling it does not require um, committees to meet and help people many people have just not met jesus it's as simple and as honest as that you may have heard me say it that the greatest need of an unbeliever is not counseling 
the greatest need of an unbeliever is not rehabilitation the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation it's as simple as that no matter what you give an unbeliever no matter how well meaning you are if salvation does not become the hallmark of your gift to him you did not help him are we blessed so let's move past the salvation experience now now by the privilege of god's grace you have encountered jesus genuinely and based on the authority of scripture the bible says if you believe in him remember the protocol for salvation is in romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 romans 10 from verse 8 to 10 it says the word is near you in your heart and in your mouth even the word of faith that we preach is that true that if you confess jesus christ as your lord and you believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead the bible says you shall be saved so there's no confusion as to how we are saved that salvation is a product of the heart and the lips not the heart alone the heart first but then the lips it says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and then it says with the mouth confession is made unto salvation praise the name of the lord so if and when a believer is saved that is wonderful but then that also creates a new kind of problem and we have a lot of this also in the house of god remaining at the gates of the kingdom without any potential for growth now it will be unfair for any parent to give birth to a child imagine a mother who gives birth to a child and after two hours the woman is impatient with the baby's crying and not walking and begins to flog that baby and says look i've given you two hours it's more than enough time to start working that's too early is that true but then the same woman after two years three years if that baby is not walking and not talking that is no longer a, an issue of childishness that becomes a health concern am i right on that so if you get saved that is not all to your christian experience that is only the foundation of the journey unfortunately many believers get satisfied with just the encounter with jesus the son of the living god and they remain there with no intention and no press for growth and maturity i will never be i'll never be satisfied so here i am fill me up with your presence i will never be i'll never be satisfied so here i am fill me up with your presence you see when the believer listen to me the moment you get saved there are two principal spiritual um, platforms that make for your growth and maturity number one is the ministry of the holy spirit number two is the ministry of the word according to the authority of scripture these are the two principal platforms that now begin to guide and usher you to growth and maturity when you encounter jesus the son of the living god your next most important encounter is the ministry of the holy spirit remember jesus was teaching about the holy spirit and here's what he had to say i have many things to tell you he said but ye cannot bear them now he said how be it when he the spirit of truth is come that he will guide you into all truth are we believers yeah that he will guide you into all truth the holy spirit's assignment is to bring you into an experiential um understanding of this life you have now received and then the ministry of the word the word of god is very powerful because captured in the word is the a revelation of god's promises you may have heard me teach captured in the word is a compendium of god's principles the modus operandi of the kingdom every kingdom every organization every 
territory has rules of engagement they have a modus operandi now you are in the kingdom you have to begin to learn the ways of god is that true you learn how god prospers you learn how people grow you learn how god restores you learn how to relate with an invisible god in heaven how do i relate with a god in heaven who i cannot see with my optical eyes yet the bible tells me he's real i must now learn the ways of faith hebrews 11 and verse 6 it says without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh unto god he must believe that number one he exists he is and then number two that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him is that true now the assignment of what we call the fivefold ministry according to ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 16 down you know to 20 and all of that talking about jesus going to hades the place of the dead and then the bible says he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men the gifts are not talents the gifts are men that he gave to men are we together now the men he gave to men are apostles and prophets and evangelists is that true and pastors and teachers why did he give them clearly stated in scripture for the equipping the perfecting of the saints the word perfection there means the maturing of the saints so these gifts that we call pastors or preachers in partnership with the holy spirit and in partnership with the word of god this tripartite formation is god's recommended strategy for the growth and the maturity of the believer jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 please give it to us media jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 here's what it says it says and i will give you shepherds or pastors after my own heart and they will please give us kjv can we have king james i will give you pastors after my heart and he says that they will feed you king james kjv with knowledge and understanding so the primary assignment of a man of god with respect to the congregation of god's people is to feed you with knowledge and with understanding to feed you with knowledge and with understanding let me recap again so that you follow closely that when you encounter jesus christ the next step is your encounter with the holy spirit your encounter with the word of god and then your encounter with a teaching priest now please listen carefully it is it is almost impossible to grow thoroughly in isolation god himself designed the system that every believer should be planted within a spiritual fold for the purpose of maturity and growth the purpose of the church is not just to come and receive miracles it is one of the things that happen in church but the primary assignment of the church is that the church is god's authorized platform for the growth and the maturity of the believer hallelujah the ministry of the holy spirit the ministry of the word and the ministry of the teaching priest when god brings you to a point where he connects you to a man of god who loves jesus and can teach you the ways of god he connects you with the word of god for your personal edification he connects you with the ministry of the holy spirit now your journey to spiritual growth and maturity can begin properly let me tell you any believer who violates this pattern there will be a side effect in their growth are we together now so you find out that there are believers who get saved genuinely saved but because they never had the opportunity to be mentored their spiritual pathway is not methodical there is just a random learning of anything and how many of you agree with me that it is not just truth that blesses it is truth that is sequentially arranged 
the bible tells us that it is arranged line upon line and precept upon precept i give you an example please look up there are certain things a believer should know before learning about prosperity there are certain things a believer should know before learning about demons before learning about spiritual warfare if you don't know who you are in christ and you do not understand the reality of your oneness with christ and your polit your your positional advantage learning about demons will only the fear that comes as a result of not knowing who you are will open the gate for demons to oppress you are you seeing that now so this is the danger of believers trying to grow on their own can i tell you hear me you can know god and press into god but you cannot grow on your own uh -uh. when jesus was 12 years as the word of god he was in the temple he was not wasting his time there as the word of god samuel who became one of the greatest prophets in the bible his greatness was tied to the methodical mentorship of eli that even in his backsliding state eli was still useful to samuel even though his eyes was dim but it was still the voice of eli god used to call samuel our world today and the church is full of a lot of pride there are many young people who believe look i have more revelation than my pastor i have more knowledge and sometimes they may be right maybe because of the avenues they have exposed themselves to they may seem to have had some more things so they look at the man of god and say this man of god what else can i learn from you oh dear god will always use the voice of eli to call samuel so if you neglect the voice of eli you will not hear god you would think god will bypass eli simply because he wants to do something great with samuel that's the reason why you have these shades of imbalances in our spiritual growth people with no character but high level anointing or people with character and no grace no power whatsoever all of these imbalances were supposed to be a product how many of you have seen young people who learned how to drive by themselves most often than not there are mistakes they will make sooner or later just because you can move a car well and a car has not hit you yet does not mean you are doing the right thing you can be making a mistake for 10 years and the day that trailer will hit you it will remind you it's like a backlog of your mistakes for 10 years accumulated in one accident is that true spiritual maturity even though paul met with jesus christ on his way to damascus you would think that after his encounter with jesus christ he should not need anybody again jesus himself referred him to the house of judas to stay there and Ananias came and said jesus whom you saw is the same one who sent me and he performed two miracles in the life of the great apostle paul number one the opening of his eyes number two the infilling with the holy spirit the man who became the greatest apostle hallelujah now when you encounter the holy spirit the word of god and a teaching priest a teaching priest also doubles as a spiritual family did you know that respectfully speaking most of the wayward troublemakers within society usually their trouble starts because they are not part of a healthy family are we in agreement on that when a young boy leaves anyhow returns home anytime he wants wakes up anytime he can be under the bridge today in a river tomorrow in one state tomorrow he can wake up by nine and begin a journey no supervision no nothing usually it would take the grace of god for that person to be a useful person this is how it is spiritually that every believer must be part of a larger spiritual fold to help in your building to help in your empowerment and to help you love jesus let's talk about transformation 
that is the next major junction in the believer's life so we have the new birth experience where you start with jesus and then your encounter with the holy spirit the word of god and the teaching priest only begins the next phase is called transformation please write it down transformation what is transformation transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like christ in experience transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like christ in experience please write it down yes you says he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all an heir one who is a beneficiary of an inheritance but for as long as there is no growth the bible says he he there is no difference between his experience and the one who is a child so when you encounter jesus the next major assignment in your life is transformation let me tell you this transformation is a very long journey it's not something that happens in one year because transformation demands that there be an editing of your value system an editing of the information some of them have become the fabric of your living until that time it is going to be a difficult thing for you to declare your disloyalty to a mindset you've held all your life transformation is one of the most difficult journeys of the holy spirit in the life of a believer because he will not force you to change herein lies the differences in the experience of believers who have met the same god and yet their experiences seem to be very different it is the degree of transformation romans chapter 12 from verse 1 it says i beseech you brethren by the mercies of god that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto god holy and acceptable he calls it your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says and do not be conformed to this world the word world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this age listen to me Many of us come from different families. Many of us come from different cultural and sociological contexts. And I will tell you the truth. There are many belief systems that we have imbibed, either based on our experiences, our levels of exposure, our associations, our, you know, the history, the antecedents over our lives. By the time you become an adult in this kingdom and today's world, you would have accumulated a backlog of several experiences. And many of them become the influencers of our belief system. Unfortunately, when God calls you as you are, he cannot use you as you are. You come as you are, but you are not used as you are. The difficulty in submitting our mindsets to be transformed by the power of the word and the power of the Holy Spirit. This is where the imminent defeat of many believers lie. It is the reason why we read one thing in the Bible and yet our lives and our experiences cannot capture in reality the victory that the Bible says has been given to the believer in Christ. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Please write it down. Let me quote it very quickly for time's sake. It says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Having their understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Psalms 82 from verse 5 to 7. 
they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes that means a possibility exists that i am genuinely saved i have met the god of the bible and yet my christian experience becomes a plethora of defeat after defeat it does not mean my salvation was not genuine it means that this, you see this kingdom is a kingdom that rises your your victory in this kingdom is knowledge dependent it takes light to rise and to excel isaiah 60 and verse 1 arise shine it says for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified of the same scripture says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light it is possible to live a defeated life very defeated life more defeated than a sincere unbeliever simply because we have not allowed the transforming power of the holy spirit to build us are we learning yes this is why we come to church this is why we engage with the word and the ministry of the holy spirit line upon line precept upon precepts now watch this this is the assignment of the teaching priest with respect to our growth and maturity the man of god is mandated with the spiritual responsibility to provide mentorship to provide doctrinal listen carefully the primary tool for discipleship is a term that we so embrace but many in many christian circles we do not even understand the scope of discipleship discipleship is how believers become matured what is discipleship it's not just the communication of the doctrine of a sect discipleship is the platform that gives you an opportunity to learn doctrine in a structured manner discipleship a platform that gives you an opportunity to learn doctrine in a structured manner the word doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means a a specific body of truth intended to make an individual become something exact doctrine an authorized body of truth that has been vetted and approved are we learning so the teaching priest now begins to expose you to the various facets of the kingdom life for instance now you begin to learn about the prayer ministry for instance you begin to learn about the power of the word of god in your your living and your excelling that man in this kingdom does not live by bread alone but by, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god is that true you now begin to learn on the economic system of the kingdom that god is a benevolent god is a benevolent king and he desires to prosper you but here is the way you prosper god's way now he begins to teach you your system of defense theologically speaking the entire book of ephesians six chapters it it gives the most balanced theological presentation of the entire journey of the believer chapters one and two begins by helping you understand your union with christ and your positional advantage by reason of being in christ it is there you find how that you have been exalted with christ above thrones dominions and every name that is named so the goal is to help you understand who you are in christ is that true the implication of your being one with christ and then it goes further to teach you how to walk a life that is worthy of your calling then it now lets you know that you are not alone in this system there is an adversary that is determined to thwart the purposes of god in your life if allowed he now begins to teach you that there is in god's economy there is a provision to ward off the hands of darkness he does not leave you in the dark 
he lets you know that there are cohorts of darkness that are determined to see that your life does not become an expression of the glory of God. Now please hear me. When a believer, let me use please one of these my dear brothers, any one of you just come. Let me use this gentleman for an example. I like to teach with illustrations. Thank you. Please come. Watch this. Let's assume with me that this gentleman say he got born again four or five years ago. At the end of five years of your Christian experience, you should be able to defend your growth in God. That means I should be able to interview this man and say, Sir, tell me what you know about God and tell me what you know about kingdom living. If this man cannot defend his staying in church, he's been wasting his time and wasting the time of the pastor. Are you offended? Can I continue? Now, this man should be able to tell me what he's learned about prayer. If I ask him as a five-year-old believer under a methodical spiritual structure that has been communicating doctrine after doctrine, what do you know about prayer? Most believers, the answer will be zero. What do you know about giving? What do you know about God? What do you know about man? What do you know about success? What do you know about Satan? What do you know about purpose and your assignment? What do you know about destiny? What do you know about longevity? What do you know about influence? What do you know about growth? Zero. This man should be so built that I can refer a new believer to him and never see him again and say, follow this man up. When you meet a graduate doctor or one who is a consultant, you can bring a fresh graduate who is a doctor and literally trust him under the care of that man and know that after three, four, five years, you will meet one who is a, a settled and grounded medical practitioner. But you do not find this in church. Now imagine that this man, respectfully speaking, I now say because you have been in church five years, I now make you the pastor of another church. You see what I've done? As confused as he is with respect to my example now, look at the things he does not know. So if this man is counseling now, what is he going to tell the person? Pastor, there are all kinds of demons disturbing me. I go to sleep and I see my grandmother calling me. And the man said, let's pray, that's alright. Because he does not have the spiritual intelligence to deal with that situation. Are we together? Now, this is the man who is going to train the leaders in that church. He will only give them from the lens of his ignorance or his limited knowledge. So, you should be able to tell me what you know about prayer. Listen, do you know when you encounter the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and you seek to be methodically mentored, with 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 precision you can hear people talk and with the precision of a consultant if i would use that expression you can easily diagnose their spiritual problem in a moment if someone comes and tells you look i don't know what is wrong i don't i don't even have passion for the house of god you should be able to know what is the problem like a doctor is listening to a patient and he said look i have i'm running temperature i'm throwing up i'm having cold and the man laughs and says okay that's all right the doctor you don't understand and the man says i know can you have that level of precision unfortunately now i'm saying this because this is a kingdom life conference imagine this man as a parent the priest of his home with this level of spiritual confusion daddy I went to sleep and someone slapped me. I said, don't disturb me. That boy is already telling you something that you will, you will suffer it yourself too. Daddy, I go to bed and it's like someone is calling me. And he says, don't disturb me. The man is not evil. He's just not matured. Are we together? Mommy, so
somebody laid her hands on my head in school and from that time i've been having a mysterious headache oh it's all right don't worry god will help you eh? go and report to your teacher you see this is the way we i'm showing you that when there is no spiritual growth it spills over to society it now begins to permeate everywhere imagine this man as a ceo now and his company is going down and he cannot interpret things from the lens of a superior belief system light of the world you step down to my darkness open my eyes let me see that's my prayer lord you're the light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see will you open my eyes let me Listen, listen, because of this man's spiritual growth, 5,000 people who are under his care in his company can rise and enjoy the blessings of God because one person is matured. He's not just educated, he has spiritual intelligence. He can look at a particular staff and know that this staff is not just a poor staff. There are powers fighting this one because he's the one God is raising to bring life to his family and one day he will invite him and say come to my office and he thinks you are discussing the issue of containers coming and he says listen i'm not just a ceo there is an anointing upon me i am transformed i know the handwriting of satan There is a lecturer who can look at a student because the lecturer has allowed himself herself to grow you can look at a student and know that this student is not dull the parents may be ignorant but this boy is that the devil is fighting the person come to my office this is not just about repeating this is not about starting again i know what is wrong with you my maturity has diagnosed your situation tell you this when we refuse to grow everybody connected to us suffers the consequences of our spiritual stuntedness the implication is that it does not affect you alone because everybody who is under your care must become a victim of your limitation Imagine how many innocent people's destinies have been trapped because of the absence of growth of leaders, absence of growth of pastors, absence of growth of parents, absence of growth of businessmen. When you encounter Jesus, it does not stop there. You need transformation. Now you begin to learn the ways of God. For instance, the Bible says, listen very carefully. The Bible says, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and it tends to poverty. Now you come from a family where nobody has risen. If you came from a poor family, don't bring a poor family out of you. If you come from a defeated family, don't bring a defeated family out of you. Become that bridge between the old and the new. You make up your mind like Jesus that I will surrender my life. For the sake of those coming ahead. Is God speaking to someone? Transformation is a long process. Because now you begin to learn. You are learning the principles of the kingdom. Listening to tapes. Do you know? Transformation is not all up to God. It takes discipline to be transformed. This is why we need to cast the spirit of laziness from the house of God. Waiting for the word of God to come and meet you is proof that you are not serious spiritually. By the truth, it says, the market does not come to your house. By the truth. You wake up in the night. 
Lord, I thank you. I came from a poor family. I came from a defeated family. I came from a family of idol worship. Lord, this has to end. I cannot watch my children. I'm not going to be able to give my children an explanation as to why they are inheriting defeat in spite of their education. Lord, let me pay that price. Even if it means using me as a scapegoat, let me go through that once and for all. And the Spirit of the Lord comes to you in response to your hunger. Call on to me, he says, and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Please hear me. An attack on your prayer life, an attack on your passion to study the Bible, is not about westernization. It's danger being programmed in your future. Can I tell you this? The devil will not attack you immediately. He's not stupid. He will wait for you to keep going down in ignorance. And then destroy all your children. Anybody who can help you, the devil will take them away from you first before he attacks you. Because if you have helpers too close to you, when you attack, you can call on them and they will help you. So the devil will allow you to be far from everywhere help can be found. Then one day he will visit you in a way that you cannot imagine. Someone shout no way. Shout it again. And if our God is for us, then what could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, and if our God is for us, then what could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, can I tell you this? Satan is many things. But a fool is not one of them. I repeat. Satan is many things. Whatever else you call Satan, you are right. But to call him a fool, you will spend your life learning that lesson that is not that foolish. Satan has an advantage of age. He has been around for a very long time. The Bible says to not be ignorant of the devices. When it talks about weapons, it says they are fashioned. No weapon fashioned. They don't just come. To fashion means he studies you. He studies your vulnerability. That anger, that becomes the entrance point. He knows that when you are broke, you are not a Christian again. So he will ensure that everything that can give you joy financially goes away. So that in that state of pain and frustration, here he comes. Are you seeing that your anger with your pastor is not just about your pastor it is the devil knowing that there is a message that should be preached in march that your spiritual life depends on he wants to make sure you do not hear that truth so he will use an occasion maybe in your unit or whatever it is an offense and anger you say this church serve the way they are and you miss out on an opportunity and start recycling years of pain in your life again is God helping us tonight? Are you seeing the reason why you have to pray for your pastor? Because if the devil attacks him with affliction, it's not just about the man. He's attacking you. It's not him. He knows that if this man is not in the best of health, it has a way of disturbing his focus. Imagine a man of God who stands on the stage and there's a school fees of 3.5 hanging on him with text messages entering his phone while he's preaching. The devil will ensure that his eyes will see one of those text messages as he's quickly turning his point. Please be reminded that tomorrow by this time, if you have not paid your school fees and you see the man scattered on stage, you will hear anything again. He's shouting and you are wondering why he's angry. What changed? invited me to come and preach are we together the journey of transformation is a real journey can I tell you you get to a point where you are matured indeed you know what to do 
the moment you see the writings on the wall your boss looks at you and says i don't know what is it about you but i i am beginning to hate you you are a matured believer you know that is not your boss because we wrestle not against flesh and blood you now go back as a matured believer you know what to do you know the power of prayer you can go and shut your house and from that central control room you know how to begin to control things by the next morning the man is calling you and say what did you even say your name is again you know what you have done listen please sit down Please take seriously what I'm teaching you. Politicians, unbelievers, they understand this. You reject them and insult them and say, I will not vote them. They don't come to you. They leave you. They know what they need to do. While you are sleeping, they are programming something upon your mind. And to your shock and amazement, you will do things you vowed that you will not do. And they will stand laughing at you and laughing at your lack of growth. As a father, when you are matured, you come to your house and you find out your wife is sick mysteriously, your children are sick mysteriously, some business that you put just crashed. No, this is not just about lack of good decision making skills. There is an adversary coming within my space. You remove that regalia of being a father and wear your priestly regalia. You tell your wife, I'm coming. While they are sleeping in the night, they are hearing the voice of a priest in thee, walking around your domain, sanitizing that atmosphere because you know what to do. Listen, do you know how proud your children will be as a father? Sleeping and hearing the voice of a priest indeed. You are praying and declaring. And as I would always say, I said this many years ago, you walk to their rooms, room by room. As they wake up, you say, no, 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 just lie down. I'm your father. Let me show you how a priest behaves. That boy goes back to school the next day and a missing script of three years is found. The day you are not around, he will do what you always do. That's how to mentor. That's how to train. Don't forget what we are discussing tonight. Spiritual maturity. You are mature to the degree to which you are transformed. Sustaining superior beliefs that are word compliant. Hmm. Hallelujah. I have a few minutes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you. Let me give you four biblical indices to measure spiritual maturity very quickly and then we will pray. Ah, someone's spirit is fired up tonight. Someone, you will leave this church and go back home in a hurry this night and shut your door and say, Satan, it was a mistake to have allowed me to come for service because with what I have heard, Hallelujah. Are you ready? There are four biblical indices to measure spiritual maturity. So we can all use this against our lives right here, right now to ascertain the levels of our spiritual maturity. Are you ready? Number one, the first measure of spiritual maturity is conformity to the image of Christ experiential conformity you may want to write that experiential conformity to the image and the character of christ experiential conformity to the image and the character of christ that is the first index to measure your maturity The Bible talks in Galatians chapter 5 when you read verse 22 and 23 it talks of the fruit of the spirit or the fruit of the recreated human spirit and now it begins to list them Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 and 23 just write it for reference sake and it talks about love talks about joy talks about peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith verse 23 talks about meekness temperance it says against such there is no law 
that means i know you are attaining maturity in the spirit to the degree to which i see an experiential conformity to the image and the likeness of christ i will always say it this way listen please when people look at you as a matured believer they should even be confused as to where you come from territorially speaking they shouldn't look at you and say you are behaving like them where are you from uh -huh, i said it uh -huh. there should be such level of conformity that it becomes difficult for people to trace you to any place especially the limitations that come with that territory are we together maturity write for reference say colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15 we're not reading it just write it it tells us things to put off and things to put on like a cloth put off all of this and then put on all of this experiential conformity to the image and the character of christ that is the first proof that means you can know that an individual is attaining maturity when you begin to see christ likeness being formed in him my little children he said of whom i travail until christ be formed in you in second peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7 just two verses second peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7 if it's not projected just write it let's rush for sake of time okay i see it here it says, and beside this giving all diligence look at this it says add to your faith virtue virtue moral excellence add to virtue knowledge verse 6 now and to knowledge add self-control or temperance and to temperance add patience and to patience add godliness uh-huh verse 7 and to godliness add brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness add charity this is growth thank you for the one you have but add this to it thank god for the one you have now but add this to it thank god for the one you have now but add. when you stop adding you are not growing so you grow by adding one of the ways you grow is by adding spiritual qualities to what you currently have last year you had this but you've not added this to it now the lord is saying well done for 2021 but in addition to that which you have add this by next year when you'll be celebrating what you've added this year listen write it down we grow by adding we add virtue to virtue truth to truth we grow by adding spiritual quality to spiritual quality number two very quickly the second biblical index for measuring maturity is your depth of knowledge and understanding of the principles of the kingdom your depth of knowledge and your depth of understanding of the principles of the kingdom the bible says in first corinthians 14 and verse 20 i hope i'm right on that please just write it for reference your depth of knowledge of the an understanding of the principles of the kingdom first corinthians 14 20 it says do not be children in understanding i think that's the scripture do not be children in understanding first corinthians 14 and 20 are we together media okay just write this you, you can look it up when you get home and then second peter chapter 1 i'll begin my reading from verse 2 second peter chapter 1 and verse 2 it says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god and of our lord jesus christ apostle paul apostle peter now is speaking verse 3 he says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge through the knowledge the degree to which you know is the degree to which you are matured the difference between a child and an adult is largely knowledge 
not just the biological differences but principally knowledge Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the Bible speaking about Jesus said and Jesus increased in wisdom he increased in stature and he increased in favor with God and with men Jesus so number one your experiential conformity to the image and the character of the Christ number two your depth of knowledge and understanding the principles of the kingdom number three ready the third index for measuring maturity in this kingdom is the degree to which the power and the ability of God is at work in your life the degree to which the power and the ability of the spirit is at work in your life the degree to which the power and the ability of the spirit is at work in your life Micah 3 8 Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 I'd like you to read the first sentence if you can see it projected ready okay I'm not sure many people have that access but then I'll read it from here it says but truly okay you can see but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord you just stop there truly you can claim to be full of power but you can truly be full of power by the Spirit of the Lord can I tell you this spiritual power is not for men of God alone spiritual power is not just for preachers and crusade evangelists and apostles and prophets no no spiritual power is for all who are in the fold the Bible says as many as believed him even to them that as many as received him to them that believed upon his name he gave them power Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 but you shall receive power power is received meaning it can be rejected and many have sadly rejected it there's no time to discuss why we need spiritual power but let me show you very quickly what is the proof that you have power in this kingdom Genesis chapter 1 Genesis chapter 1 I'll begin my reading from verse 2 it ends at verse 4 Genesis 1 watch spiritual power in motion if this is not captured in your life you do not have spiritual power ready and the earth was without form and void the Hebrew word tohu wa bohu darkness and confusion and darkness was upon the face of the deep the Bible says and the Spirit of the Lord hovered or moved upon the face of the waters please read verse 3 with me if you are a child of God ready one to read and God said let there be light and there was light stop keep that scripture there this is the hallmark the zenith of spiritual power when you say it and it becomes you have power not just falling down not just speaking God here is giving us a template of his idea of spiritual power and God said whatever he said is not the issue the fact that he said and the Bible says there was when you say and it becomes you have power and God said and there was and God said and there was litmus test verse 4 same Genesis 1 verse 4 and God saw the light and that it was good so please look up four things must be captured for it to be said you have spiritual power number one words number two manifestation number three you must experience it number four it must be good if these things if it is spiritual power what you say that happens must be good if it is not good it did not come from God because my Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift comes from where above 
so you don't just think it's the sky he said from the father of light in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning and god saw the light please look up the last time you declared my life changed did it change did you see it was it good this is when you know you are a blessing both to yourself and to others listen do you know why we speak over people because we are giving the spiritual power that is resident within us an opportunity to reproduce this if it is power you say it it happens and it happens in a way you must see it so it does not just hang in the realm of the spirit the word became flesh the bible says and we beheld the prosperity became flesh the increase became flesh the advancement became flesh he saw that it was good when you read there's no time for us to turn there but when you read the story of the centurion especially matthew's synoptic account the bible tells us about a man who was a centurion that would be the rank of the captain in the army and that he came to jesus beckoning on him to come and address the issue of his sick child is that true and then the bible says jesus respecting him and showing honor he said don't worry i'm coming to your house the centurion now makes a revelation that even jesus passed a comment about it he said no you do not need to come there is something i understand i am a man under authority having servants over me i say to one go and he goes i say to another come and he comes therefore you jesus i know there is an authority that backs you speak the word only and jesus said who taught you i've not found this faith this construct this understanding who taught you that words create possibilities in this kingdom so i can be here and i can send a word and the bible says if you say it and it becomes and you see it and it is good it was the power of god that produced it you can use this four litmus test to judge there are people who say it and it happens but it is not good something is wrong with the power that sponsored that result if it is the power of god it does not happen arbitrarily it happens at the instance of words number two it manifests number three you see it number four it is good the ability to say and see is the hallmark of spiritual power to wrap up on this point let's go to genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 i'll plead that we all read it together we're almost done genesis 21 1 and 2 please help us media please look up everyone we're reading one and two together ready let's read and the lord visited sarah hold on hold on hold on you see the protocol again the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he has god only does what he says he does not do what you want he only does what you want that is consistent with what he said so the way to make god move in your life is to find what he has said not find what you want god you are watching me that's not a wise prayer you will never receive answer from that kind of prayer present your cause he said bring forth your strong reason this is the judge of the universe the monarch of the universe that sits upon the throne and he says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne hmm. the secret to committing god is finding what he has said that is written this is why it is important you now see that many of us pray all kinds of prayers and don't get results because the prayers are inconsistent with what god has said as mighty as god is he's only limited to what he says and the lord visited joshua selman as he has said it is my responsibility to find what he said about me 
and bring it to this just God. And say, Father, you have said Gentiles will come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising. Hmm. You have said my path is as a shining light that it shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. Don't you think this is some baby elementary thing? This is what separates people. That's why many believers do not receive testimonies in their lives. Their Christian experience is one, one episode of pain and shame and disappointment after another. Your assignment is to take words and bring before him. Lord, you said this. That I will not give birth for sorrow. This my child that is not looking like what you have said. I leave you with the integrity of what you said. And God says, who can stand against me? Do you believe that? He told Joshua, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. And when an angel appeared to Joshua, Joshua removed his sword and was going to kill the angel. Who are you? And the angel had to say, no, 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 no. I come as the captain of the Lord's army. Do you know why? Because Joshua said, the one who spoke to me, told me there's nobody who will be able to stand against me. Ah. Hear me believers. What has God spoken to you through your man of God? You've thrown it on the ground. Tonight is time to pick it back. Lord, you said it. That all my 10 years of crying from 2010, you said this is the year you are wiping my tears i hold on to your word and god says now that you believe me get out of the way let me show you that i am alpha omega let me show you i am beginning and end can i tell you this i submit to you by the message of god and i believe that this is the same testimony with your man of god and all the people here i have seen god move in my life in ways you cannot imagine from the simple faith like manifestation of bringing before him what he said i love children i really love children i don't know what adults i don't i love them too but i really love children praise the name of the lord i love everybody i love everybody but children and sometimes I find myself guilty of just making promises. Sometimes I was not thinking. I just tell them, look, I'll buy you banana. I'll buy you this. And they look forward to seeing me. The moment they see me, they just hold me. And with confidence, the first thing they say is daddy. You know that's an implicating statement. When a child calls you daddy, it means every other thing you don't do makes you feel stupid. Because the proof of fatherhood is the ability to easily give. If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children so a stingy man is not a father comes from the word abba source sustainer protector defender so they come and hold me sometimes i didn't make any promise they just say i'm hungry and they mention something that is very serious whatever their eyes can see within that vicinity you just know you are in trouble. Pray that whatever they mention is something you have money for. They don't fear saying anything. They can point to a car or a truck and tell you they want it. Is their is their their they are declaring the confidence they have on you. Are we together? And so when they tell me those things, I am happy. And then I tell them, okay, you go and get it. Or I will get it for you. And they will trouble any adult within them and say, has it not arrived? Can I tell you this? Learn to put pressure on God's integrity. Not by complaining and shouting and rambling and say, God, are you blind? You are, you are from heaven and you are seeing how Nigeria is. That's not prayer. That's lamentation. You see, most of the things we do in the secret place is not prayer. God only answers prayer. He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but is only moved by his word. To be touched and to be moved are two different things. If it is action you want from God, it is his word you bring to him. Are we learning tonight? The workings of the power of God. It is based on this power I know this night, that within the few minutes we have, that that mountain that stands before you, that would not give way that that Egyptian 
that you have seen that followed you for this conference it will be a risk if i'm the one producing the result there is one mightier than i this is the basis for believing a preacher because the preacher is representing a government that is higher than him may his favor be upon you generation your family your children your children it's a blessing may his favor be upon you and a thousand generation in your family your children listen can i tell you sincerely do you know do you know one of the reasons why i love testimonies it's not because they just endorse that you are a man of God or a man sent from God. I love testimonies because they reveal the invincibility of the power behind the words that were spoken. I give you an instance that I can look at a gentleman like my brother who came here and say in the name of Jesus by this time tomorrow may God change your life. Now as at the time I'm speaking nothing around his life may look like that except that the power of God will move like a tornado all across Lagos and start looking for men who must make this prophecy come to pass. Are you seeing that now? From one location the power of God will go from end to end. Listen, was it not the prophet who said, by this time, tomorrow, the power of God started moving around. All the healthy men were not available and it went to lepers. There has to be someone who will bring that word to pass. If it is the power of God, you say it, it happens, you see it, and it must be good. In one minute, I don't know what you want to see this year, but I give you the next five minutes with faith in your heart please open your mouth and pray this is what i must see in my life oh god let there be an evidence to my spiritual life someone is praying please take god seriously tonight those who are following following online following from whatever nation participate in the prayer outworkings of the power of God someone pray Lord this long standing issue let it come to an end once and for all you spoke to me in 2017 it didn't seem to happen you spoke to me in 2018 take his word back to him commit his integrity Oh, someone is praying. Remember what he told you about your children. Remember what he told you about your education. Remember what he told you about your health. Bring it before him tonight. One more minute. Take your prayer serious. You will marvel and wonder at what God begins to do in your life. Shake away every darkness. Everything that stands to mock your spiritual experience. No, I'm no longer a baby in the spirit. I defend my throne with the testimonies that I'm declaring that would come to my life. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the prosperous of the Lord say so. Let the anointed of the Lord say so. Let the believer in the Lord say so. Majesty.
majesty Your grace has found me just as I am Empty handed but alive in your hands Your majesty Your majesty standing and I want you to please pay attention please pay attention please pay attention I told you that I will give you four indices that measure your maturity number one your experiential conformity to the image and the character of the Christ number two your depth of knowledge and understanding the principles the modus operandi of the kingdom Number three, the degree to which the power and the ability of the Holy Spirit, the power of God finds expression in your life. Number four, the degree to which the love of God flows in and through you. Your love life is the fourth measure and the highest measure of your spiritual maturity. Listen to me. The zenith of maturity is not knowledge. The zenith of maturity is not even character. The zenith of maturity is love. There remain at this tree, the Bible declares, faith that moves mountains, hope that makes not a shame, but the greatest of all it says is love. John 13 and verse 35 he says, by this shall all men, how many men? Not some men. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one for another. Part of our benedictions in the house of God, we say this all the time and yet sometimes we do not pay attention to what we are saying. Here's how we say it. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. Then we call it the fellowship. It's the word koinonia. Of the Holy Spirit. It says to be with you. So the love of God should be with you. Can I tell you this? Love is powerful. What power could not do on the cross, love did. Power could not kill death, but love killed death. The last enemy that can be destroyed. As important as power is, because we're a generation that is so conscious of power. But after talking about the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he rounded up the last verse by saying, and now I show you a more excellent way a more excellent way of healing is healing by love a more excellent way of preaching is preaching by love you can preach by power but you can preach by love anything power cannot do shift power away and bring love do you know why because there is a law in the realm of the spirit that love never fails. That was not said about power. Uh -uh. There is no record in scripture that power never fails. But it says love. That means whatever is failing, add love to it. You change the calculation immediately. There are many, many preachers who cannot be trusted with great people because most times now I'm, I'm teaching apostolically to the body of Christ many people would be listening to this there are many preachers who just want members but do not truly love the members and God cannot trust you even if you have power if that love component is not there 
there are certain limitations you will have consistently in your life. Why do we believe in miracles and the manifestations of the power of God? The reason is because miracles are a letter from Jesus through his vessel to you. What does that letter say? Number one, I love you. Miracles are a letter. Don't just receive the miracle. Receive the letter written on it. Many people receive the miracles, but they do not receive the letter that comes with the miracle. For every healing, for every deliverance, for every breakthrough, for every lifting, for every manifestation of prosperity, see it as a letter from His Majesty to you. The first thing written on that letter is I love you. And for some of you, I still love you. Because you can imagine, Lord, do you love me with all these things that are happening in my life? Number two, the second thing written in that letter through miracles is that you can believe me. I am dependable. Every time you see the manifestation of the hand of God, please do not just receive the miracle. When you receive a tray, look at what is on the tray. Miracles are a tray. There is something on that tray. It's a letter from His Majesty to you. I'm helping you interpret it right now. Because some of you, between January and now, you've received many letters from God, but you have refused to read what He's writing. Like Daniel, I want to show you what he wrote. Number one, I love you. Number two, I am dependable. Number three, I am not only dependable, I am almighty. It's terrible to depend on a person who is not mighty. And within the five or so minutes that I have left, another letter is about to come to your life. My assignment is not just to midwife the delivery of that letter, but to teach you how to read what is written there. For some of you, the letter is so personal, it will come with your name. That he will come to you and say, you are the one I am talking about. This is the reason why I love to see miracles flow in and through my life believe me it is not just to accredit that i'm a man of god you see in in the work of the ministry there is a way god helps you that you don't live your life to prove any point again whatever needs to be said has been said when god has glorified himself through your life your passion now does not just become making a name for yourself it becomes helping people to experience the reality of the grace and the power the wisdom of god when i prayed for this meeting my prayer was that everyone would leave with something from the throne through this vessel of clay to your life because you see all blessings come from god they come through men to men for some of you that letter will direct you to the next job that will marvel people for some of you that letter some of you he will even write it and speak it in your language and say even if you don't understand english this is me writing i intend for you to understand one last time all miracles and all manifestations of the power of god contain in them letters from his majesty through his vessel to you the recipient and written in those letters are three sentences one i love you he says i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness number two i am dependable many systems and structures and men may have failed you don't add me to the list for you are my god began to speak with
with me. I struggled with the Lord for three years to move from Zaria to Abuja. And I told him, I said, Lord, just leave me where I am. I'm, I don't, I don't want, I don't want trouble. I don't want any. That place is an expensive place. I'm not ready for any headache. Just leave me to serve you sincerely. When I began to see the visions of what He is now doing today, of course, I've worked with God enough to know He can do it. But sometimes the headache of working with men, I said, God, spare me that. Spare, I am comfortable to serve you wherever you want me to do. But I remember that I've pledged to Him. I've lost my ability to say no to Him. Provided it is Him, my answer will always be yes. I remember when I got to that place, Abuja is a second home, so it's not, it's not strange. But I looked around. I remember until then I had spoken with men of God, pastors who had sincerely told me, look, ministry is a bit hard in this place because of finance, because of so many things. The facilities are expensive and they were right. And then people are busy. This is the FCG. Where do you get people to come and listen to you? I remember the Lord giving me an instruction. And after I obeyed that instruction, I was with the Lord praying. And he did something in my life. And he reminded me again that miracles are a letter. The facility that we now use is a miracle. Like I don't want to go into the details of it. But um, if you use that facility, you are either really anointed, a fraudster or a demon. You have to be one of these three. Hallelujah. And I remember when I sent a few people to talk to the facility managers that this is what we want to do. I said, no way. This is, this is about the most expensive facility in this city. And we, we cannot stand church people destroy facilities. We are not ready to ruin. We've invested our all into this. But I know that when I was praying in a strange way, I had never been there. But God told me that was the place. The moment I saw the picture, he said, this is the place. I was not surprised, but I said, God, make sure you take responsibility for this instruction. My father and my mother, they are still alive. I want them to enjoy having a responsible son and not believe something has happened to me. I was in Enugu for a conference when the owner of the facility this is a true story and I'm saying it because it is something that if he has even given the, the story himself and he said he called and he said he had the voice of God like a man speaking and he said this thing it is one of the reasons why I gave you this ground that God told him because he did not buy it it was free it was an allocation that was given he said, one of the reasons why I gave you is because this ministry was coming. And so make sure that you work with them and you are fair on them. And I, I wanted to go and see him because he wasn't feeling too strong. And I just wanted to greet him. It was my first encounter with him. And I stepped into the office to greet him and he looked at me. He called all the managers and there and then we sat down. And the rest, to God be the glory. Why am I giving you this story? If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God right now. Same God right then. If he did it before, he can do it again. The God who does things only once is not a true God. He must have the ability to do it again and again and again. Can I pray for you right now? In one minute, I'd like you to ask the Lord something specific. Please go ahead and pray. We're out of time. Please ask the Lord. Believe me, my God will surprise you.
writer says it is so sweet to trust in Jesus someone pray give me a visitation by your word hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now if if you are trusting God for healing in your body please just lay your hands there we may not have the time to bring you out but you are trusting God or you are standing for someone someone connected to you the devil is trying to play games and to mock the name of Jesus please just lay your hands if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest I want to pray for you I have seen the mighty hand of God from nation to nation region to region I know that this God is a mighty God. I want to pray for you. Please, I want you to believe it. Take your eyes away from the sickness and the affliction. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. Now in the name of Jesus, I pray, stretching my hands to you. I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead. That can quicken the mortal body of a man. Let the life and the power of Jesus touch you and touch that infirmity right now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, from the crown of your head, even to the soles of your feet. Help that woman, please. Help her, someone. Please help her. In the name of Jesus, be healed now. Be healed now. Help that woman. I'm seeing something leaving her like a serpent. I curse it now. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. For the Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I decree and declare every planting in your body that is not the planting of the Lord, I command it to leave you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command it to leave you now. Now, I'm seeing the number 11, and the Lord is telling me that there are 11 people here. You have worked with God for a while, but the area you need in your life now is spiritual empowerment. The mountains that stand before you, you need a dimension of the anointing of God. I'm seeing 11 of them. The power of God, I'm, I'm just seeing like, like smoke just across this place. The power of God is coming on these 11 people. If, if, if you can bring them for me, please. Help them, please. Whether you are an usher or not, please. If anybody is under the anointing, help them. Right now, I'm about to stretch my hands and pray. Wherever you are, the spirit of the living God, please help them so you don't expose them. Be careful. Be careful. Ushers, you can help them, please, so that in the name of Jesus, 11 of them right now, let that fire of the Holy Spirit rest upon you. Some of you, go, ah, help this woman, my God, please. Whether you are an usher or not, just help them so they don't injure themselves. Something is happening in your life. You'll never be the same. Never. Never. There are some of you, God is saying, listen, I'm prophesying now. I'm seeing the number six. And God is saying this prophetic word is for six people. As I'm talking, the power of God will come on you. Bring them out. I have raised you for such a time as this. You are the light I am sending to your family. Help them, please. There are people, God is saying this to young and old. In the overflows, I have raised you. You are the voice and the savior that I have raised. Bring them out. You are the savior. God is saying it again. You are the savior. The one mandated with the spirit and the power of Gideon to salvage your family.
a name Abiodun. Who is Abiodun? I'm hearing a name Abiodun. Is, is there someone with such a name? The Lord is speaking to me. Abiodun. No, this person is wearing like green or lime. You are wearing like a kaftan. Is there someone like that? Oh, Abiodun is both. Can I pray for you, sir? There is, I will not take your time, I promise you. Just allow God to give you that visitation. Please take it high for me. There's someone here, I'm seeing you're a legal practitioner. You're a legal practitioner, you work with a firm. But I'm seeing that there is a problem, I want to pray for you. You're a lawyer, legal, lawyer, legal practitioner. Is there someone like that, I want to pray for you. Sir, what do you do? Sorry? No, I'm looking at you. Um, is, is the mic working? Huh? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you holding a chain and a metallic detector. I work with a security outfit. You work with a security outfit. I'm seeing you hold a metallic detector. That's what I'm saying. Can I pray for you? Is it your firm? I work with the firm. Go and register a company. I'm seeing God is going to lift you. You understand i fear god i will not waste your time my brother go and register a company how god will do it you leave it unto him but god will surprise you and connect you to people you believe that i pray for you may you experience the mercies of god even by the power of the holy spirit i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ who Yes, I know there are a number of abundance. I, I will just pray for you. But I'm seeing this the, the, a lawyer. Where, where, wherever you are, if you are following online, then I'm praying for you right now. There is a woman here. The Lord is revealing to me your daughter. Please don't be embarrassed. I don't mean to embarrass you. Your daughter is married, but she's not been able to take in. I don't know who that. I don't know if it's a problem with conception, whatever it is. And the Lord wants me to speak over that family. Where is that person? Just wave your hand where you are. Mama, that's all right. You don't need to come. Let me pray and agree with you. Wherever your daughter is, the all-seeing eye of his majesty that has seen you and seen your issue, here at this annual kingdom life, help that man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release you and your daughter from every bondage of delay. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to speak over your life there are many of you the blessing of the lord upon you is in the works of your hands but in the last one year that's what i'm hearing it looks like your business your help that woman there has been a challenge please help her whether you're an usher or not if anyone is under the anointing you just help them but i'm seeing businesses that have been challenged and the lord is saying i should place an anointing upon your hand that you will leave from tonight and doors will open in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. I stand upon the grace of Reverend Kunat and the servants of God here represented. I decree and declare whatever has refused to walk, hear the word of the Lord. I speak to it. It begins to walk now. It begins to walk now. It begins to walk now. There is someone you are supposed to have traveled abroad to further your studies this is what i'm saying but one of them you had a visa problem they didn't give you a visa and the other i think the school fees was not complete i think you were supposed to get a scholarship but something happened i don't know who that person is i want to pray with you please make sure you are not telling lies we're in the presence of jesus christ Can I pray for you? Do you believe that if I pray for you, God will release you? You see, let me tell you this. Listen, I've taught you. I don't know if it was in the morning I said it. It is not every delay that is demonic. There are many times that certain delays are the love of God in motion. Because some things need to be in place in your life before he releases you. Just because God does what he says does not mean he's careless. Are we together now? His love is exalted above his power. 
so if he finds out that his power will act and produce something in your life that can destroy you he will withhold it momentarily until that limitation is corrected so don't get into this thinking that everything that carries a semblance of delay is satanic maybe this is a prophetic word for someone you may see that god has answered certain prayers in your life but it looks like some others just leave god he knows what he's doing yours is to understand and find out what you need to do to prepare you for what he's bringing you into but i pray for you in the name of jesus can i tell you this nobody rises and excels by their strength it is the lord that caused moses and aaron to advance therefore i speak whether it is a visa whether it is it is your the scholarship whatever it is promotion does not come from the east nor the west nor the south in the name of jesus christ by reason of this conference as a church we release you move to the next level of your life move to the next level of your destiny in the name of jesus christ hear me let me prophesy over your life for your shame receive double please believe it for your shame receive double for your shame receive double and anyone who has laughed at you and mocked at you saying where is your god may my god use your results to answer them this year help this woman please help her please help her please help her help them may my god i say it again the god of my covenant may he use your result to answer them help this woman every evil conspiracy over your life and destiny let me prophesy over you and it extends to your children if there is anyone here and the spirit of death is already eyeing you say you will not finish this year help them please say your husband will not finish this year your children will not finish this year oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory in the name of jesus i bring you liberty now liberty now liberty now thou shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day nor the noisome pestilence the destruction that wasted in noonday a thousand shall fall by your side ten thousand by your right side none shall come near your dwelling with your eyes will you see and behold the reward of the wicked your love see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain hey. open the floodgates of heaven let it rain help her please we are wrapping up I'm seeing the number 7 and there are spirits that have been tormenting you and your family right now I'm about to pray that devil must let you go once and for all the Bible says say unto God how terrible are thou in your ways there are families and there are individuals demon spirits masquerading and causing troubles help them please troubles with relationships please help them at the count of three I want you to shout that name Jesus from the front to the back and any spirit that will not let you go must go tonight are you ready now one two three shout Jesus I command every spirit help them please my God every force every yoke I curse you by the God of heaven release their destinies now release their lives release their finances help this woman please hallelujah hear me 
everything that left your life that should not have gone i stand by the spirit of prophecy and i declare between now and the next three months in the name of jesus the son of the living god i call it back to your destiny help them please i call it back to your destiny anyone here due for promotion and you are being grounded because of sentiments and the wickedness of men the manipulations of dark powers here at this kingdom life conference i decree and declare the power that can release men to go forward like moses he was instructed he said tell these people that they go forward i stand in the spirit of moses and i prophesy to you go forward in the name of jesus Finally, I want to pray for you. He says, for your shame, you shall receive double. He said, where you have this been deserted so that no man would pass through you, I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Therefore, I decree and declare, according to your theme, a new dawn. Let me speak to you. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. For behold, the Lord is doing a new thing in your life. As an individual, as a couple, as a family, as a church, as an eldership, as a leadership, may you see new things happen in your life. Let me pray for your spiritual life. You came here tonight and your prayer life has gone down because of the vicissitudes of life your word study life has gone down your passion and your appetite for the things of god have gone down can i tell you this like the hair of samson even though it was caught it can grow back again therefore i decree and declare every spiritual lukewarmness every coldness in prayer passion for the house of god passion for the word of god that you once had and has gone away let there be revival right now in the name of jesus christ over the membership of this church i know that there are people from different churches baptist branches or denominations but i'm praying particularly for the membership of this assembly everything that is alive grows therefore i prophesy upon your life from glory to glory from favor to favor from grace to grace in the name of jesus christ you are here right now and you're saying apostle i have been so marvelously blessed by all you have done i have seen the demonstration of the power of god but i have a confession to make I need Jesus I have a confession to make I once was on fire for the things of God but as it is right now my life has gone cold and has gone haywire and if you will give me a chance before you are done with your session I want to make Jesus Lord of my life perhaps you could not come in the morning or whilst you were here in the morning you didn't see a need to come out as at yet but whilst hearing me teach the Holy Spirit began to speak to you that it's time to win that war of destiny. We have just one minute. My time is up. Wherever you are, scattered across the, the, the balcony, the overflow, wherever you are, I want to count one to five. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I know that I need Jesus. I want to have a new beginning with him. I'm going to count one to five. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain. Don't stand waiting for anyone to be the first to come. There's nothing to be ashamed of. He gives you a new beginning. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. If you are running, please run and come. Lord, I'm tired of everything. I'm giving you a chance over my life and my destiny. Two, come. Don't say, Apostle, I came with my friend and I'm ashamed of coming out. Nothing to be ashamed of. Come. Come. He gives you a new beginning. 
Apostle, I love Jesus, but I am not sure whether I'm saved or not. Come, join them. You can be sure there is such a thing called the assurance of salvation. Are you coming? Please come quickly. Our time is up. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for the boldness to make this decision. It takes a lot of courage to say yes to Jesus. But it is the noblest, it is the noblest decision that you can make in this side of God's kingdom. May I please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a token of your surrender. And say this after me. Let it be loud and clear you are not reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Some of you are crying. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Say after me. And those who are following online, you are following from whatever nation, you are following from whatever center, or those who would be watching the rebroadcast. This is an opportunity to come to Jesus. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior, as my Lord, and as my king. I receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that the power of sin of satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god i am born again amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit to your work on earth by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i decree and declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life i declare that you are bona fide recipients of the life of god I commend you therefore to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the word that you be grounded and established in righteousness and I speak over you that it will only be for you from tonight from glory to glory you go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name I pray amen and amen all right those of you in front thank you so much our father is waving his hands at you i want you to follow him he will lead you to the counselors and they'll have a word very quickly let's celebrate them as they go thank you so much hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you